This is an Eyewitness News special presentation celebrating Juneteenth Emancipation Day. Juneteenth, a festival for freedom, a holiday to honor the ancestors, celebrate the culture and connect with the community. From the past to the present, see the way New Yorkers are keeping traditions alive for future generations and meet the retired 96-year-old teacher from Texas who made it her life's mission to make Juneteenth a holiday across the country. Juneteenth has always been in the forefront of my mind and making it a national holiday was really up front. You'll see how Opal Lee became the grandmother of Juneteenth. Hello, I'm Shade Betterinois. 2023 marks the 157th anniversary of Juneteenth, the holiday that recognizes the first day of freedom for enslaved Africans in Texas and commemorates the end of slavery in the United States as a whole. Over the next half hour, we walk you through the history of the day and talk about the movement to make it the country's first new holiday since Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day was adopted in 1983. We talk with two of the people who played a pivotal role in making Juneteenth a federal holiday. And we explore African-American traditions, through performance in food, a lesson in history. But we want to start at the beginning, the day that freedom arrived. The news was restricted from um, both free and enslaved black people from knowing what was going on. On June 19th, 1865, Nearly two years after the Emancipation Proclamation issued by President Abraham Lincoln freed enslaved people in Confederate states, the Union troops arrived in Galveston with the news. We're talking about the 19th century here, so information takes longer to travel. The message carried by a Union general from central New York, General Gordon Granger. The moment most people get the news, the first thing that they would do is actually go again on a migration process whereby they would try to locate their families um, because families have been separated. We also have to remember that the Emancipation Proclamation did not necessarily free enslaved people throughout the entire United States. The Emancipation Proclamation only freed enslaved Africans in the Confederate states that had ceded from the Union, and the 13th Amendment abolished slavery nationwide. If we really want to talk about genuine, true liberation for Black people, it did not start until 1865 with Juneteenth. And here in New York City, thousands of people came out for the 14th annual Juneteenth Festival in Brooklyn. The festivities kicked off on Friday for three days of music, art and skits, and it's more than just a celebration. Organizers want New Yorkers to know their history and highlight black owned businesses right here in the five boroughs. Here's Eyewitness News reporter Darla Miles. It's mind blowing. I would definitely say that because uh, it went from zero to 100. Of all of New York City's celebrations and festivals, Juneteenth NYC had been flying under the radar since its inception in Linden Park in 2009, founded by Brooklynite Athenia Rodney. My 10th year, I was ready to give up because still, you know, it was a challenge. Like the same people coming back every year. Nobody was interested in knowing about Juneteenth. All that changed in 2021 when June 19th was declared a federal holiday. In 14 years, Juneteenth NYC has grown into a full three day event. There are vendors, performances, an award ceremony, even pressing on through COVID. We had 20,000 people join us online for a virtual. <laughs> um, I cried the entire time. I was like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. So many people asking questions, engagements. The whole point of this festival is to educate and raise awareness as to exactly what Juneteenth is and why it's important. And in doing so, for the second year, Rodney has expanded here to Prospect Park in order to reach more people. My favorite part? It's just all the people, the way when they come to my tent and they, they light up and they're like, you did all of this? Lamique Smith back again as a vendor, setting up a small scale version of her store, Miki's Den, which sells custom jewelry and her line of natural skincare products. And the reason why I love the Juneteenth event, because the energy, the people, the vibe, it's just something, it's, it's something that cannot be reckoned with. In Brooklyn, Darla Miles, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. And we've talked about the significance of Juneteenth and why we celebrate it 158 years later. So how did it become a federal holiday? 
Here's Eyewitness News reporter Kimberly Richardson. Taking a holiday to celebrate uh, the end of a horrific moment for our ancestors, why would we not do that? A question many asked for decades. It's one of those things where the pressure builds, pressure builds, pressure builds, and then things break. June 17, 2021, President Biden signed a bill making Juneteenth a federal holiday. New Jersey Senator Cory Booker was an integral part of the push. When you get a chance to honor the ancestors um, in, in, in a position that New Jersey gave me, um, I'm really, really proud of, of that. In 1980, Texas became the first state in the country to declare Juneteenth a holiday. Roughly 14 years later, the first known movement recognizing what's also known as Jubilee and Freedom Day kicked into high gear. What took so long? Joy Bivens with the Schomburg Center points out histories that impact people of African descent are often marginalized and invisible. Black people have always been at the vanguard of pushing forward their own interests and um, advocating for their own freedom and advocating for what's important to our communities. <laughs> Crucial to this process, what was a time of racial reckoning in the nation in 2020 when millions took to the streets in protest following the police killing of George Floyd? After those moments, then really there is there's the political will, if you will, to make sure that this, this becomes a holiday. We pledge allegiance to this flag, liberty and justice for all. That didn't just happen. <laughs> it had to be worked for and struggled for. And to pay tribute to Juneteenth, the Schomburg celebrates black literacy and the freedom and joy of reading, once considered a fugitive act. Kimberly Richardson, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. And of all the people who work to make this a federal holiday, one woman's dedication made her a household name. Meet Opal Lee. And you can really call her the grandmother of Juneteenth. She is a 96-year-old retired teacher from Texas who spent years rallying people to join her in a push to commemorate the end of slavery on one special day. And in 2021, her lifelong dream became a reality. Our Sandra Bookman spoke one-on-one -on -one with Opal Lee about what she considers her greatest achievement. Opal Lee, it is such a pleasure and an honor to be able to speak with you this evening. You are known as the, the, the grandmother of June 19th. You have worked on this issue for years. You walked from Texas to Washington. Why was it so important to you that June 19th be viewed by Americans as more than just a, another festival? I think uh, some of Doc Myers sort of rubbed off on me. He's responsible for at least 42, if not more, of the states had some kind of Juneteenth observance. So he's probably looking down and saying, it's about time you got it done. I understand yeah. when you were 12 years old, on June 19th, your family's home was burned down by a white mob. Did that at all uh, affect your feeling that Juneteenth, June 19th was a day that people really needed to remember and understand its importance in history? I'm afraid if it was, it was uh, something that was very, really deep. You know, because I did so many things after that happened. I was still a middle school child, and um, I finished high school and went away to college and had a family and taught third grade so long, I was beginning to act like those eight-year-olds and starting a food bank and having a farm that's called Opal's Farm. So I don't know if that was a subconscious something, uh, but Juneteenth has always been in the forefront of my mind. And making it a national holiday was really up front. You were in the room when President Biden made June 19th the 11th national holiday in this country. 
Talk to me about what it feels like to have not only been at the White House in the presence of the president, but to see something that you had spent just really years working on become a reality. What did that moment feel like for you? I was so humble. I wanted to do a holy dance. But the children say when I tried that, I'm twerking, so I didn't. It was special. I mean, extra special to have Juneteenth with the president and the vice president and all those legislators. I tell you, young people say it was off the chain. <laughs> yes. It was off the chain, and we owe you a lot of that. A former school teacher, you spent so many years um, impacting young lives. What do you think children need to be taught about the significance of Juneteenth? Not only the children, but their parents, because there are so many people who aren't aware of what actually happened. And of course, I spend all the time I can telling people that a General Gordon Granger made his way to Galveston, Texas with several thousand colored troops. And there were 250,000 enslaved people in Galveston because the plantation owners had brought them there thinking that when the war was over, they'd go and get them. And for them to hear, because General Order Number 3 was nailed to the door of Reedy Chapel AME Church, and when those people came in from work, and then somebody read that to them, that they were free, they started celebrating, and we've been celebrating ever since. And now the whole country can celebrate that very important day. Opalie, you are a true American hero, and we thank you, thank you, thank you. I think your I name is going to be taught in schools. <laughs> All right. Thank you for listening. And Opal Lee, you are such a treasure and an inspiration. And Miss Lee is 96 years young, and she tells us she plans to walk two and a half miles on Juneteenth to spread the message that Juneteenth means freedom. Juneteenth is also a day to spend time with family and friends and share a meal. The foods you'll find at a celebration are symbolic. Coming up, the queen of comfort food invites us into her kitchen to cook up her favorite prosperity recipes and explain the importance of the color red. And Juneteenth isn't the only holiday that honors African-American history. We have the story of Pinkster and a group keeping tradition alive through dance. And welcome back to our special Celebrating Juneteenth. While we talk about the history of June 19th, there's another holiday that you may not be as familiar with. It's called Pinkster, and it's actually one of the oldest holidays that celebrates African-American history. Here's Eyewitness News reporter Crystal Cranmore. At the Dykeman Farmhouse in Inwood, a tradition comes alive. This is our third year of holding a Pinkster celebration. One of the oldest African-American holidays. A lot of people know Juneteenth as the um, oldest black holiday, but Pinkster has really been around since the 1600s. Dutch settlers brought the holiday primarily to the Hudson Valley, New York City, and northern New Jersey to celebrate the Pentecost seven weeks after Easter. But according to historians, more than a century later, the holiday would be considered an African-American tradition. The actual Dutch trusted their Africans to leave their farms for a week. So even that autonomy that the Africans had allowed them to feel more comfortable in practicing all of the traditional languages, traditional dances. The Okra Dance Company and the Dykeman Farmhouse Museum have made it a mission to revive the legacy of Pinkster through historical reenactments. Combination of West African traditional movement. Um, we used influences again from native traditional um, movement and drum circles. And with help from the New York 
State Commission on African American History, the hope is to spread awareness of the contributions of black people, both free and enslaved. Part of the initiatives to uncover and to share with the rest of New York and frankly with the rest of the nation and the world, and the incredible history of perseverance that African New Yorkers have brought here. Crystal Fanmore, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. And still to come, Charlene Alicott takes us into the kitchen with Melba Wilson for a twist on the Juneteenth classic, plus the story of the Juneteenth flag and the deeper meaning behind the symbols. Red, white, and blue are the colors of the American flag, and those same colors also make up the official Juneteenth flag. The flag with its new star on the horizon, a deliberate design. Crystal Cranmore looks at the meaning behind it. Red, white, and blue, the colors of the American flag, but they also grace the face of another quintessential American banner, the official flag of Juneteenth. The red, white, and blue colors and the images on the flag reinforce that the enslaved black people freed by the Emancipation Proclamation were Americans, as much as their descendants are today. But that's not where the Juneteenth flag symbolism ends. The date, June 19th, 1865, is the day that the enslaved men, women, and children in Galveston finally received the word that they had been freed. A declaration made two years earlier. Since Texas is the birthplace of Juneteenth, the Lone Star State is represented by the star at the heart of the flag. The burst surrounding the star depicts the image of a nova, a new star, symbolizing a new beginning for black Americans. That symbolism is shared with the arc, the curved line, or new horizon, that separates the banner's red and blue sections. The flag has flown since 1997 and remains a proud symbol of black freedom in the United States of America. Crystal Cranmore, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. And as we continue our special celebrating Juneteenth, thinking about what to eat on June 19th, the famous Melba Wilson invites us into her kitchen in Harlem to cook up her favorite prosperity foods. While Juneteenth is a day to reflect, it's also a time to rejoice and for some, a celebration of cuisine. Red foods take center stage for Juneteenth menus and symbolize resilience and joy. Eyewitness News anchor Shirlene Alicott takes us into the kitchen with a comfort food legend for a fun twist on their traditional prosperity meal. We're here at Melba's of Harlem with chef and restaurateur Melba Wilson. Thanks so much for doing this with us. I mean, who better to find out about the significance of Juneteenth and the food than the queen of Southern comfort food? I mean, Oh, you are so, I mean, so kind. I, so kind. You've earned it. So Thank what you. do you have here for us? So, you know, when we talk about Juneteenth, there's certain dishes that have to be included. We're talking about the collard greens. Mm. Collard greens are about prosperity. Yes. Okay. Um, remember, they were the bitter greens that were known as garbage greens. And in order for our people, our enslaved people, to go and work the plantation, to work the fields, they had to have something that was nutritious. We also have peas and rice. Now sometimes I'll use black eyed peas, but sometimes I like to flip it and use a little bit of those red beans. Red, which has historical significance for Juneteenth. Red also being prosperity and life. Totally life. It represents the spirit of our people. And I love how you remixed uh, Juneteenth. Today, you are uh, making us something a little different. We're doing some egg rolls. Yes. I had some peas and rice left over. I also had some collard greens. So what I did was let's take that and remix it. You know, with our food, nothing ever goes to waste. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make one of our favorite favorite apps here, or as I like to call them, comfortizers, are Melvis spring rolls. On a spring roll wrapper, mm -hmm. right? Put right in the middle, two spoons, there you go, of our peas and rice. And then we're gonna take our collard greens, and we have some red chili pepper. And then we're gonna take our cheese, a little egg wash to keep those sides together. We're gonna roll this like so, and we're gonna drop it like this hot. Perfect. Melba's Juneteenth spring roll. Mm -hmm. 
red chili sauce. Yes. The collard greens. Yes. The rice and peas. The prosperity dishes. Yes. All encompassing the holiday and how it's celebrated, but in a spring roll. Mm. I love this. It's called a remix, right? Mm. <laughs> Something so comforting. That combination with the collard greens, mm -hmm. the rice and peas, but the brightness mm -hmm. of the chili sauce. It's a perfect combo. And the cheese. It's representation of who we are and of this amazing time. The celebration that only took 156 years to be recognized. For those who say, you know what? I too want to recognize the official date of emancipation for African slaves. How can they celebrate? Mm. I always like to do something to give back. Mm. So perhaps take a meal of some of your favorite foods, something red, something green, something lucky, something prosperous. Take it over to your neighbor. Recognizing those who are sometimes forgotten is a great way to celebrate Juneteenth. And who better to tell us this story than Melba Wilson, you live that truth. It's something that you have done for the 18 years that you've been in business, giving back. Um, so you are an example. Thank you. Thank Cheers. You. Cheers. Happy Juneteenth. Happy Juneteenth. And thanks, Melba. You've done so much for our community. And I hope you enjoyed our special presentation celebrating Juneteenth Emancipation Day. I'm Shade Betteradmois. On behalf of everyone at Eyewitness News, thank you for joining us and happy Juneteenth.